Hi, I'm Joe Feeks, editor of Poultry Health Today. And today it's from one editor to another because we've got Gary Thornton. He is the editor of Poultry USA. Gary, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule here. Gary, you, you wrote a, a blog um, earlier this month talking about consumer misconceptions. And you know, you're gonna get that, I think, with any industry, but poultry has its fair share. Um, could you tell us your, your insights on why some of these misconceptions develop? Well, Joe, it's the uh, story that all veterinarians, I think, in America are familiar with. They uh, meet a new acquaintance in their neighborhood or fly on a plane and their seatmate realizes they're a poultry veterinarian and they learn their uh, conceptions about the poultry industry and the use of antibiotics in it. Those beliefs include things like uh, there's limited or little uh, veterinary oversight or FDA oversight over the use of antibiotics in poultry on the farm. Of course, we know that's not the case. Uh, other uh, consumer conceptions could be that uh, the antibiotics that are used on the farm will end up in food. And of course, consumers are concerned about that. And of course, we know with withdrawal periods, uh, that's not really a concern. And uh, finally, uh, a big piece of it is they're concerned about the development of resistance of pathogens uh, from the use of antibiotics in poultry and that this could uh, threaten uh, human health. And that last piece is, is probably one of the more complex parts of it. People like chicken, as evidenced by the fact that it's, it's the number one protein and uh, it fits with so many diets. Why has chicken become the, the lightning rod for so many of these concerns? I think it's partly because consumers, the public, has such limited uh, experience with the poultry industry. Uh, a consumer can drive uh, down the road and uh, look and see corn growing in the field, and they might uh, look and see cattle grazing in a pasture, and they may understand a lot about those two industries from just that. But when they drive past a poultry house or a uh, processing plant, they can't see they can't see what's inside. And I think uh, a lot of companies now, more companies now, are addressing that by letting. Uh, people into their facilities, their operations, to see the, uh, the science and the care that's used in growing poultry. But when consumers have some doubt or, uh, or something that's unknown to them, especially about food, they're very concerned about their food. You might say they're obsessed with it. And uh, so if there's something they don't understand, they need help in filling in the picture. And uh, of course, if uh, the poultry industry doesn't do that, for themselves, uh, it will be the uh, NGOs or the activists or, or the media who, who will do that for them. You talk to a lot of people in the industry. What do you see as a potential solution to that? The biggest uh, opportunity for the industry is to be transparent. I think that the challenge is that it's a complex subject, particularly when it comes to resistance. So. The, the industry has to develop messages for different audiences and, and, and they would need to be delivered in different ways with different language and, and, and approaches. For example, uh, for the past you know, 50 years or so, the industry has talked about antibiotic use uh, based on science and you know, economics. And I, I think that that's having limited success in helping the uh, consumer understand uh, the, the topic. And so I think we need to uh, develop more uh, storytelling approaches, some, some uh, insight that they could get from examples, from seeing, putting a human face on the industry and maybe showing the poultry veterinarian you know, actively in their role. Uh, it would help a lot in that. But you know, we have a 24-hour news cycle People go to the internet for uh, a lot of their news, and we've sort of become a, a nation of, of sound bites as far as consumers go. So when it comes to checking which box, antibiotics or no antibiotics, people who are uninformed would naturally go to, to no antibiotics. That, that's, that's the case, and um, the it's a di that's a different challenge uh, with the, the consumer and, and that education process. 
Uh, today in our, uh, we had what sponsored a, a panel discussion and there was at least one of the uh, uh, no antibiotics ever companies that are uh, trying that approach who, who, who their belief is that that more and more companies will have to move in that direction eventually. Uh, that's to be remains to be seen. Uh, but you do have to find ways to communicate a very complex message and, and uh, I think many consumers will understand our message, but we have to put a human face on it. Now, you attended a, a session a couple of weeks ago, I think it was Mike Apley from Kansas State University had talked about starting a, an ethical and social consumer dialogue. What, what does that mean to you? What does it look like? Uh, up until now, the industry has predominantly talked about science and, and uh, uh, economics. I think that Mike Apley of Kansas State University said that we need to begin to draw regulators and, and even the uh, human medicine uh, community and NGOs and, and, uh, and others, including consumers, into a dialogue that exposes the fact that there are trade-offs involved in the antibiotics policy. It's one thing to say that we should uh, eliminate the use of antibiotics in certain circumstances or to say that uh, we should reduce the use of antibiotics in others, but it, that has to be balanced against the responsibility of the uh, poultry veterinarian to care for the uh, welfare and health of the flock. And that last part is just, uh, as many vets will tell you, all vets will tell you, it's just not negotiable. They have to take care of the, uh, the health and welfare of the flock. So uh, it, it's a complex uh, subject, it, it, it does involve trade-offs, but it's a hard decision to make sometimes, but we can't let the regulators off that hook. They have to face it. The poultry industry has to face it. Uh, NGOs have to face it. We need to bring them to the, face that fact, and, and consumers as well. Now we have the veterinary feed directive that is going to be coming January 1st of uh, 2017. Uh, this is uh, an initiative, of course, to promote even more judicious antibiotic use. Do you think that could potentially change any consumer's perceptions of the uh, poultry industry's direction? I think it's a good thing. Uh, I think that the industry uh, really is, is in a good position to uh, tell its story in that context because we have a very professional veterinary core in our uh, industry and uh, it, it's a chance, it's an opportunity for the industry actually to uh, tell the story that we have really uh, scores of people who are involved every day on, on a moment's call 24 hours a day to care for flocks for their health, for their welfare and it, this is actually an opportunity for us to push that story. There is uh, several market research studies that show that Veterinarians, as a profession, uh, have a very high level of credibility with consumers, right up there with medical doctors and school teachers and so forth. Is there a, a way that you think that the poultry industry and poultry veterinarians can build on that to try to educate consumers about their involvement in antibiotic selection so that the consumers don't think that producers are just using these products indiscriminately, that there's a veterinarian on hand who uh, is making these recommendations. Uh, is there, you think we, there's room to tell that story or is that horse left the no, bar? I, I think there's still room to do that. And uh, uh, for example, I'll, I'll use uh, Purdue Farms as an example. Dr. Bruce Stewart Brown does a very capable, able job of telling that story. He's been used in uh, some ads, for example, in the uh, produce uh, explanation to consumers of what they do, and I think that can be very effective. I don't think it's 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 the only part of it's not the sole solution, but it's certainly uh, something that the industry needs to to do to tell. It's it's a true story. It's a very uh, credible story, and it's 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 just it's just good to tell. Now, you're the editor of Poultry USA, and you have several sister publications that uh, communicate with the poultry industry worldwide. Is there a, a role for your organization to, to help tell this story? 
I think so. I think that uh, our major role is really helping the industry understand the issues, uh, maybe help the industry uh, recognize where the opportunities are. It's not that we have uh, such great insight as editors ourselves, but we talk to a lot of people who, who do have insight. And uh, I think there's, there, that's our major role is to, is to help the industry, to support the industry, uh, to, to help uh, equip them, in, so to speak, with, with uh, some ideas. And, and, you know, we'll be doing that in the future. We're already covering this issue uh, in our publications, and, and I'm sure it only, our coverage will only get uh, grow and, and get more detailed in the future. And of course, with the internet, it's not just the poultry industry that's looking at your articles. You've got people from all walks of life, I would imagine. Yeah, that's true. And if, in fact, it's more true today than ever before uh, with the internet and, and digital uh, media. Uh, we're just uh, seeing more and more uh, uh, involvement, engagement from uh, readers from all walks of life, uh, not just the industry. So that's very true. Well, I know the uh, industry really appreciates your efforts. We have been talking to Gary Thornton. He's the editor of Poultry USA. Gary, thank you again. Thank you very much, Joe.